Hello everyone, welcome to Martian Gothic Unification. Another very obscure game today, one that, again, you probably, just like Cryostasis, probably have not heard of, and even if you have, you probably haven't played it. And the reason for that is because it's not a very good game, and it's also old. And old games that aren't very good tend to be forgotten. Now, you might ask why the hell am I playing it if it's not very good? Well, two reasons. One, it's not all bad, and two, I have a lot of memories attached to this game. So, bear with me. I'm going to tell a little story. Come with me back in time to a time maybe you remember too. Alright, back in the old days when Steam wasn't really a thing and I was, I don't know, I have a really terrible memory, so I don't know, ten, maybe I was 10 years old, maybe I was 12 years old, I don't know, I was young. I used to buy games in a physical store. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? At uh, GameStop. And one of the games I bought a long time ago was this, which is the very copy I am now using. It actually came on a single CD, Martian Gothic Unification. So as a very young kid, I bought this game from a physical store, installed it, started to play it, and it creeped me, it creeped me out so much that I couldn't play it. Like, I got to the very beginning, and I saw some scary stuff, and I just couldn't finish it. Like, I could not bear to play it. And so for a long time, it just sat there. Just sat there unplayed, and I was too scared to touch it. And then a little while, a little while later, after, I don't know how long, months, years or something, I was not as young, so I was able to take horror more, so I actually managed to play it again and actually finish it. So yeah, there's a lot of memories attached to this game. Because I remember buying it, and I remember playing it, and I remember being scared so fucking much at playing it, it terrified me. Oh my god. But now here it is again. Alright, so just based on my memory of this game, which again is very old, so it's very rough, but from what I remember, here's what's bad about it. Okay, it's it's a sci-fi horror game. In the vein of Resident Evil, it's, I think it's kind of like a Resident Evil clone, practically. And I remember it had the stupidest puzzles. Like, they were so, so bad, it's ridiculous. You'll see. And I'm going to be making fun of them. It had pretty damn terrible voice acting, and... I think those were the two major problems. Yeah. But it did have a couple good things. Um, it had very good background art. And the best thing about this game to me is the fact that it's sci-fi horror, which is a genre that I love so much. It's so rare. And there's something so atmospheric and creepy and horrible and attractive to me about being completely alone on Mars, away from civilization, in a base filled with evil things. And that's what scared me about it so much before, and it still scares me a bit now. It's such a creepy idea, being completely alone. Alright. So, before I begin, I want to even go a little further into the nostalgia. Games back then actually had manuals that's right, they actually printed instruction booklets to play games, on paper, using ink. It's such a strange thought, isn't it? And I have it right here. That is the manual for Martian Gothic Unification. I have not had a manual in so long, it's not even funny. And it's not even a small manual either. You know how games, like, they used to, games used to come in huge boxes? Like, bigger than hardcover books? And then, a little while after that, they started coming in really tiny boxes, like, just big enough to hold the jewel case. Well, this is actually came in a big box, a huge one, and the manual is about as large as a hardcover book. Not as thick, of course, it's not a couple hundred pages, but just in width and length. It's very big. So yeah, let's, let's dive into it just a little bit, just for fun, for old time's sake. It's called the Martian Gothic Unification Survival Guide. I just want to read the, um, the introduction. Something really cool about an introduction being in a manual. You know, back when you didn't know what the game was really about until you actually bought it. Whereas nowadays, of course, it's so easy to find out what a game's about. You just look it on Steam, look at a trailer, look at some Let's Plays, look at a live stream. But back then, 
Like, when I bought the game, it was so mysterious. I didn't have any help. I didn't know what the hell it was. Alright, so here it is. It's like page... Page 4 in the manual. The story so far. 11,000 BC. A Martian meteorite crashes into the Antarctic ice. 1984. Martian meteorite labeled ALH 84001 discovered in Antarctica. 1996. NASA announces the existence of alien microfossils in meteorite ALH 84001. 2009. First manned mission to Mars. Establishment of Vita-1 base to investigate Martian bacterial life. August 8th, 2018. Last message from Vita-1 base. If you send a manned craft, warn the crew to stay alone, stay alive. Transmission status? Radio silence. Meaning of the panicked message? Unknown. Reason for radio silence? Unknown. Fate of Vita Base? Unknown. June 17th, 2019. A deadly game begins. A three-member investigative team lands on Mars and enters the derelict Vita-1 base, each going in by a different airlock obeying the secondary mission directive, Stay Alone. They are prepared, at worst, to confront the aftermath of a bacterial outbreak, but what they find inside the base is the stuff of ancient nightmares. If one dies, all die. But, in the end, only two can survive. That gives me chills, even though I know the game isn't going to stand up to that kind of epic intro. I, I still love it. I'm holding a physical manual from a game I used to play, and I'm reading the intro in it, and uh, there's something so cool about that. Oh, I love it. All right, just for a tiny bit more fun, let's look at the requirements of the game. This game came out, what, 2000, I think? Is there a copyright on this? Yeah, I think it came out around 2000. All right, the recommended specifications for the game. Windows 95 or Windows 98? <laughs> <laughs> God, I remember actually using Windows 98. Oh. Processor speed, 500 megahertz. RAM, 64 megabytes. The graphics card, 6 megabyte DirectX compatible 3D accelerator card. Sound card, DirectX compatible Sound Blaster Live or Ariel A3D, whatever that is. I remember the Sound Blaster cards. I've had quite a few of them, but I have no idea what Ariel A3D is. I guess maybe it was like a cheaper version of Sound Blaster? Hard disk space. 700 megabytes. 700 megabytes? I have two one terabyte hard drives. Oh my god. And to think this was only like 13 years ago. It's amazing how far technology has come, isn't it? CD-ROM speed. Or, yeah, CD-ROM drive speed. Four times. Yeah, I rarely use disks, but I'm pretty sure CD drives kind of like peaked at, what, 50-something times speed? Oh, and the best part, DirectX, it requires, you better make sure you have this installed, people, it requires DirectX 7. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for the manual. Let's get into the actual game, and by the way, another very quick thing, um, this video is actually going to be, the top resolution for it's going to be 720p. But the game actually runs in essentially 480p. So I'm, what I'm actually doing is I'm upscaling the video. And I'm not... I don't want to get sidetracked on exactly why that is and go into detail on it. But basically I'm upscaling the video to 720p to improve the audio quality. Because YouTube recompresses everything you send it. I won't go into any more detail. But yeah, if you, if you watch in 480p, that's going to be the original video resolution of the game but the audio quality of my microphone is going to suffer. So if you watch in 720p, the video is going to be upscaled, so the video won't improve, but the audio will. So, yeah. Okay, there's the manual. I've had my little burst of nostalgia. New game. Oh, by the way, you can't use the mouse in this game. Yeah, you have to use the keyboard for everything. There is no mouse cursor. So this is going to take me a bit to get used to. New game. Here we go. And, guess what? The game crashed. I'll be right back. Alright, here we go again. New game.
could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space, were it not that I have bad dreams. Four centuries have passed since those words were written. We have begun to penetrate infinite space, bounded in our little nutshell spacecraft. But we still have our bad dreams. I can sense them coming across the midnight of space, can read the cryptic circuitry of their ship, decipher all the codes of fear in the hearts of its crew of three. I wish I could tell them that all will be well, that the future, after all, is not so terrible. But that is not in my nature. They're very near now, the three in the ship. I know each name. Each individual pain. Khan, Matlock, Kenzo. Three are coming. Only two will leave. The bad dreams will always be with us. And now and again, dreams come true. true, 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 true. This is Kenzo Uji, Enigma Mission Log, 9.12 a.m. June 17th, 2019. I've just crash landed Zeus 19 within 2 kilometers of Vita Base. The base directional beacon was out of operation, and there was a demon of a dust storm raging. Fire broke out on landing, forcing Matlock, Karn, and myself into emergency evacuation. Enigma Mission Log. Everything. Diane Matlock, Earth Control Bacteriological Division. 9.12 a.m. June 17th, 2019. Beginning investigation of continuous radio silence from Mars Vita base. I attempted to enter airlock 2, but the door was jammed from the inside. My air supply almost ran out before I made it into airlock 3. No sign of a reception committee. No sign of anyone. We obeyed the secondary directive by coming in through separate airlocks. Stay alone. Stay alive. That's what we were told. And that's what we've done. Investigating further... Enigma Mission Log. Martin Kahn. Earth Control Security Division. 9.12 a.m. June 17, 2019. Prime Mission Directive to investigate cause of continuous communication silence from Vita Base. I'm now inside Vita Base. It's still silent. The mission ended almost before it began. Kenzo had to pilot the ship in by the seat of his pants. While the dust storm didn't help, we crash-landed close to the base. I think Kenzo made it all right into airlock too, but I don't know about Matlock. Haven't heard from either of them since we entered separate airlocks. In the middle of all the panic, we didn't forget the secondary directive. Stay alone, stay alive. Whatever the hell that means. I checked the airlock's EVA suit hatches. Plenty of suits. Uh, no air tanks. Uh, no way out. End report. Here we go. I'm in control. <laughs> I keep just having nostalgia flashbacks to everything that's happening. I know it's not a very good game, but still. <laughs> I love the fact that the character models look like they're made out of Legos. Look at, look at his arms. Are those literally rectangles? I think they are. Yeah, his arms are literally rectangles. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. So yeah, I'm gonna... It's gonna take me a little while to get used to the controls, because I'm not using the mouse. Uh, let me find the controls in the manual here, because the controls in the menu suck. Oh, come on, where are they? It's gonna be weird. So, oh, here we go. So yeah, um, in this game, you can switch between characters at will by pressing tab, like this. Which is pretty neat. So you kind of, you have to work together, even though you need to stay Stay alone, stay alive. Part of the mission directive. 
So, so you can't actually, you know, go up next to each other, but you can help each other by, say, like, with one character, you find a key card, and there's these, I think, like, air tubes or something that you can send stuff through from one character to a location that another character can access. So you have to kind of work in tandem. Actually, not kind of in tandem. You do have to work in tandem. That's a lot of what you're doing in the game, actually, to solve puzzles. So that's pretty neat. All right, so yeah, the arrow keys, which I so rarely use anymore because I'm usually using WASD, but the arrow keys move. They turn my Robo Man. And I believe spaces kick. Yes. Yeah, you fucked that arrow up, man. Yeah, you showed who's boss. <laughs> All right, what do we got? All right, so enter is to do stuff. Inventory is. I. Alright, so it looks like... Can I switch between characters in the... Yes, I can. Okay, so you can go into the inventory and see what everyone has. So it looks like that's the time up above. That's the person's health, that red bar. You can see their stuff. Alright, let's take a look at what... I have. I, I just realized I forgot this person's name. Who am I? How do I get my name? Oh no, resume. Uh, whatever, I'm sure I'll find it soon. Okay. So again, let's take a look at what we have. I've got a watch. This thing tells more than the time. Could, could you elaborate on that? What else does it do? This thing tells more than the time. I bet I'm going to go through the entire game and that mystery will never be solved. What can this watch do other than telling time? Does it include Tetris? We'll never know. Letter. Oh, maybe from my wife or something? That's a personal letter. Care to read it? That's a personal letter. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. So they went through the trouble to add a letter to this person's inventory. You know... That makes sense to you to tell a story. Maybe it's a personal letter from his wife or his kids or something that he's taking on him on his long mission. And you go to read it to hopefully get some bit of backstory, and you can't. That's a personal letter. That's personal. I ain't gonna tell you, except I am, I am him. So he's not telling himself. What? Oh my god. Brilliant design decision, game developers. Good job. I'm gonna clap for you. Good job. A candy wrapper. Wrapper from an old maid country cottage candy bar. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. I could lick Sounds off what's good. left, but I'm not that kind of guy. Are you sure you don't want to lick it? Sounds dirty. And I have a silver bullet. Did he come to Mars thinking there would be werewolves here? But he didn't even bring a gun. My lucky silver bullet. I wonder if there are any Martian werewolves around. <laughs> All right. Oh wait, no, wait, 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 wait. What was this? I went over to the right. View map. What is that? Oh, whoa. Uh, where's the where's the you are here? I'm in one of the airlocks. Where are the airlocks? Uh, I don't see it. Um. Oh, is it the green ones marked one, two, three, and four? No, that wouldn't make any sense. The airlocks would be right next to each other. Whatever, it doesn't matter. All right, next person. She also has a watch. Maybe she'll tell me more about it. Retro digital watch and health monitoring device. Standard Earth control issue. Sorry, never mind. The icon was so blurry. I thought that was the woman. It's actually not. Sorry. Sorry, what did you say again? I was too flabbergasted by the fact that you talked like a man. Retro digital watch and health monitoring device. Standard earth control issue. Oh, okay, so it's a health monitoring device as well. So that's what's giving me my vital stats up above. Good to know. Satsuma. Looks like a cracker. It wasn't as fresh oh, as it looked. Damn it. I pressed enter thinking it was examined, but it was eat. Well... We'll never know. It's a photo of himself. I'm a long way from Tokyo. 
Also, this guy definitely is the best voice actor out of the bunch. Isn't he so good? I crash landed near Vita Base. There was a hell of a storm. I'm so far from Tokyo, I sure miss home. I am a robot that is trying to pose as a human. I fear I have not been well designed. A booklet. And what is contained within these pages? Tips for video games. Totally useless. Ha <laughs> ha, self-reference. Uh, fuck you, game developers. Ooh, she has a bunch of stuff. Watch and physiological and psychological monitoring instrument. Standard earth control issue. Hmm. Nicotine batch. After months in space, that's the last one I've got. Well, I don't think she's gonna find any cigarettes. Well, actually, wait. Well, she's on a base. There probably are cigarettes here. Unless they're banned from all Martian bases? I don't know. Maybe they need to conserve air or something? Pollution? Who knows? One contact lens, plus the other in the crash. I'd be better off without it. Hmm. I have the vague feeling that this contact lens is used for a puzzle like hours and hours and maybe dozens of hours from now. Lipstick? I thought that was a bullet. I'm too retro for my own good. Okay. <laughs> a few friends back in London. Nice! I see the game developers are really consistent here, look. See, when you go with, um... Uh, Kenzo. His photo? You get to actually see the picture. I'm a long way from Tokyo. But then you switch over to, what is her name, Matlock? And her photo doesn't actually have a picture that you can see. A few friends back in London. Right off the bat, they're already setting a standard of inconsistency. Okay. So, there's everything. And yeah, the background art. Uh, the backgrounds are just as good as I remember. They're really good. They're very low resolution, obviously, but they're damn detailed. That's the nice thing about older games, is that sometimes they can surprise you, because even though the 3D part of the games, assuming they do have a 3D part at all, which this one does, you know, the 3D is always really bad. He's made out of, he looks like a Lego man, and he has shitty, horrible, low resolution textures, and etc, etc, but... Any 2D backgrounds tend to be really good looking compared to the 3D stuff, so it's kind of surprising. Open airlock door. Uh. No. I don't want to die. Can I actually do that? Personally, I like to breathe oxygen. I'm with you there, man. Wait, shit, what the hell is his name again? I know Kenzo and Matlock, but what's his name? My lucky silver bullet. That doesn't I say. wonder if there are any Martian werewolves around. Oh well. <laughs> Looks like we got a suit, uh, storage locker as. These camera angles are going to be fun. And there's nothing in here. There's more to that than meets the visor. <laughs> ah, good one. EVA suit. Tank's empty. Ooh. Radio. I'll take that. So, uh, what can I do with it? Radio for on planet communication only. Hmm. Can I use that to communicate with the other team members, or can I already do that through, like, my fancy watch or something? Con in airlock and decon tam one area. Can anyone hear me? Hi there, hope Kenzo's alright. Kenzo, how's trip? I'm okay. Okay, now let's find out why Vita Base has been silent for ten months. Be ready for anything. Matlock, Kenzo, let's get moving, people. Yes, boss. Okay, Karn. Heading into base. Okay, so Karn, Kenzo, and Matlock. Got it. And apparently Karn is the boss. Oops. 
It looks like I can't open that storage locker. I think the only storage locker I can open is I want the red light on it. It's so weird to not use the mouse in a game. It feels wrong. My mouse is just sitting there, all lonely. It needs company. Open locker, that's the same locker, right? Yep. All right. Does it control panel? No, it's not. All right, I think this is the decontamination. Oh, thank you, door. Shut in my face. I think this is the decontamination chamber. Well, let's do it. Decontamination sequence completed. I feel more contaminated now than I did before. <laughs> so much for the decon thing. No shit, that green gas looked like some sort of neurotoxin. Well, whatever it is, I'm okay for now. Door malfunction. Computer override required. Damn it. Well, I guess that's the end of... What was his name? Karn? I have such a good memory. So let's switch to the next character and see what we can do. Alright, Kenzo. What have you got here? I talked to the others on the way here. Oh, okay. I talked to the others on the way here. <laughs> Examining the helmet makes him say, I talked to the others on the way here. What does that have to do with the helmet? I talked to the others on the way here. Good for you, Kenzo. Good for you. The air is almost gone. I'm gonna have fun with this game, just making fun of all the nonsensical shit. Oh my god. I don't- this game might make me insane before I finish it. We'll have to see whether I can put up with its bullshit, but I have a feeling I am going to be able to put up with it because of the fact that the thing that frustrated me and wasted so much of my time when I first played through this whole game was the incredibly, unbelievably stupid puzzles, and this time I have a walkthrough ready at hand. So if- if I come up against any resistance and I'm getting frustrated with the puzzles, I'm going to use the walkthrough. Because really, you should not be ashamed to use a walkthrough in this game. The puzzles are crap. It is like... It is... This whole game, the puzzles are basically keycard hunt. Over and over again. It's like a keycard hunt simulator. Nothing in there. Wait a minute. I didn't... Did I have this radio before? What the hell? We all have radios now. What? They did not have radios in their inventories before. So since Karn got a radio, everyone has a radio? What? Uh, okay. Whoops. That's strange. Ooh, someone just left this open. And there's nothing in it. Alright, let's try to go through here. Well, let's get neurotoxined. Oh yeah, I can feel my brain melting. Oh. Decontamination sequence completed. Decontamination sequence wrong completed. About decontamination. Something very wrong. Foreshadowing. No, seriously, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is foreshadowing, actually. I vaguely remember something related to that, but I won't spoil it. Don't worry. It'll be a surprise. Alright, let's see if Kenzo's door works. It does. Oh, God. I... I'm actually scared. This game is ridiculous, but it f gives me the fucking creeps. You know what? I Seriously, I'm scared. I'm going to the next person before I go out there. I'll, I'll explain, and I'm sure you'll see why the creatures aboard here creeped me out so much. You'll see.
Oh, oh what the fuck? She had... <laughs> okay, well, piccolo sounds like some sort of a pickled vegetable, but it's apparently a pistol and she gets 96 shots? Damn. I'll take it. Wow. 96 shots. Either this thing shoots BBs or someone stored a lot of ammo. I mean, that's got to be at least... I don't know, magazines don't carry that much. That's got to be at least five clips, probably more like nine. Piccolo gun. What Khan would call a lady's weapon. Well, I'll take any weapon over trying to fight them with a contact lens and a cracker. Teeny tiny bullets. <laughs> I love the way she says that. Let me hear it again. Teeny tiny bullets. Teeny tiny bullets. So how do I... I can use... Uh, okay. Oh, the item in hand shows up in the top right. Okay. Like right next to their avatar. How do you reload? Like, do you have to manually reload, or... Oh. Wait, what? Uh... The f... Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought I had two pistols. I just realized that the pistol doesn't disappear out of your inventory. It gets duplicated in the top right. Okay. Good to know. I thought I maybe duped the pistol. Alright, well... Now I've got it in hand. Ah, oh, the fighting in this game. I, I'm tempted to spoil why this game scared me so much now and kind of explain the combat and everything, but I guess I'll just wait until it happens, kind of. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Never mind appearances. It's what's inside that counts. EVA suit without air in the tanks. Useless. All right, let's see if she can go out. Time to get brain cancer. Oh yeah. Oh, I feel like a bug being sprayed by insecticide. Decontamination sequence completed. Decontamination sequence I completed. I thought that before decontam. No, I feel terrible. Really terrible. There's something really funny about the kind of like cheerful computer. Decontamination sequence completed. It's like it's happy. It's like, yay, I just sprayed you. Door malfunction. Computer override required. Okay. So yes, I do need to continue with Kenzo. He's the only one that can go outside. God, I don't want to go outside. He doesn't even have a weapon. And I don't believe there's any way to transfer items between characters at the moment. No, there, I haven't seen any vac tubes yet. All right. Let's go. Right now, let's go. Okay. I'm not sure if this game is going to be as scary as I remember it, or if I'm just scared because I remember how scary it was, if that makes any sense. Damn the bassy John Carpenter-ish music. <sighs> okay. Is anyone around? Anyone alive? Or dead? Uh -huh. If you're dead, don't answer. <laughs> That's more true than you know. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't have a weapon. These members nicknamed the quarters after famous streets. I think this is Madison Avenue. Okay, let me check that on the... Whoops, damn it. Let me check that on the map. Madison Avenue. Wait a minute, is there a key to access the map? Let me check. Inventory... Wait, you're kidding me. M doesn't access... According to the controls, M does not access the menu. Indeed, it doesn't. Because that would have been too hard. Alright, Madison Avenue. Madison... Oh, there it is. It's on the right. Right middle. Oh, I just came out of A. A for airlock. Okay. 
All right. <clears throat> so I believe the numbers and the colors deal with key cards. I, I don't think they're called key cards. They're called something else, I think. But yeah, like right above me, north, there's a rainbow room, and then there's, I guess, something that requires number two green card. I need my green card. Or they'll kick me out. <laughs> there's a street called Lonely Street. Oh, something tells me I'm going to have a lot of visitors. I'm not going to be lonely, but it's not going to be the company that I had in mind. Hmm. I don't like these red corridors. The bulkhead sealed. If one's sealed, they'll all be sealed. <clears throat> the only way to raise them is through the main computer. All right, so it looks like sealed off is the way to Downing Street. All right, so down the hallway should go to Lonely Street. Let's go check out Lonely Street. That's sealed too. The bulkhead sealed. If one sealed, they'll all be sealed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Well, there's only one way to go. Actually, never mind, there's two ways to go. Uh, this is one of them. What's in here? Rainbow tag required. Okay, so that's what they're called. They're called tags, not cards. They're key cards. So no, there truly is only one way to go. Sure looks like it just wants to get up, doesn't it? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Uh, if anyone here was alive, would they have left the corpse lying in a corridor? Nope. They have such long claws, don't they? It's like they don't even have fingers anymore. It's like they've turned into monsters. Fuck. Okay, well, I remember the beginning of the game quite clearly, and I'm not going to pretend I don't know what's going to happen, so it's a, it's a minor spoiler, but the, the only alternative is to pretend I don't see it coming, so I'm just going to say it. In the beginning of the game, you come across these zombies, these dead people, and you play, you get to play for a little bit before any of these wake up, but then after a little while, they just all wake up. So we're not quite there yet. Alright, this one is not going to wake up just right now, when I get near it. But it's going to wake up soon. And I guess I'll just describe the combat. Okay, so the reason the combat scared the fuck out of me in this game, and the whole game scared me so much, and I hated to play it, was because of the fact that you can't kill them. No, I'm not kidding. You cannot kill the zombies. You can temporarily put them down, but they will always come up. Again. So it's just like a, it's a stopgap measure. It just temporarily stops them, and then they'll come up. So the enemies are essentially unlimited, but you have a limited number of saves that you can only use at certain computer terminals, and you have a limited amount of ammo. So limited saves, limited ammo, unlimited enemies. Yeah. I couldn't, I, when I was like 13 or whatever, when I was playing this game, I couldn't take that. I was like, oh my god, they're... You know, they're, they're trying to kill me, and I can't kill them. I had no power. And that's why I like the overall design of this game so much, at least when it comes to that core mechanic, is the fact that you're kind of powerless and you can never truly conquer the environment. That is damn good. That's what makes this survival horror. Because you're weak. You can die. You have limited resources, and you can't kill them. That's awesome. And scary as hell. I... <laughs> I guess Kenzo's... Non-committal shrug means that he didn't find anything? I don't know. Huh? I don't feel like it. 
He doesn't even look like he searched him, but I'm going to assume he did. I remember too, when I first played this game, I, I kept dying. And I thought this game was basically impossible to beat and was extremely difficult. Until I realized one thing, and that's that when you get grabbed by a zombie, or a creature, whatever these are, they're kind of like a cross between a zombie and a creature. Uh, when you get grabbed by them, you basically get infinitely hurt and bit upon. You know, they keep biting you and you're kind of grappled and you can't shoot them when you're locked in a fight with them. And what I didn't know back then is that you can actually break out of that lock by smashing the left and right keys. If you do that a bunch of times, you can break out of it. If you do it super fast, you can actually get out without taking any damage. That one key thing is the difference between instantly dying at the first zombie you see as it munches on your neck and actually surviving. So yeah, good to know. That's my tip. Just the tip. Green tag required. All right, green tag. So where's this? I'm I went past rainbow. Okay, so I guess I'm looking at the green door number 2. Yeah, I think that's green door number two. Alright, don't mind me. <sighs> oh, look. Another one. Alright, I'm trying to keep myself oriented here. So to the right is Boulevard St. Michael, and to the left is Broadway. Let's go down Boulevard St. Michael. <laughs> I remember that one. Let's go in here. Well, call me a techno zen hippie, and I've been called that before. But there's a dead man hovering in front of me in the Boulevard Saint Michel. I can hear him speak in my mind. So, we've got reanimation, telepathy, and levitation. Now I call that downright supernatural. An alien haunting. Are you on something, Kenzo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This game can definitely be pretty ridiculous. Telepathy, levitation, and reanimation. I remember when I first played this, that zombie scared the shit out of me so much. Like, I just thought at any moment it would come down from its meditation levitation and try to kill me. And I, like, I worked up the nerve to go up to it forever. It took me so long. And then when I finally did, I discovered it doesn't even attack you. Seriously, look. Watch. Don't be scared. See? Just, like, get the fuck out of this corridor. Nah. Denied. And I don't believe that actually hurts me, does it? No, it does not. And you might ask, given that he's in the middle of the corridor and I could just walk, like, right here, you know, just cut across diagonally, why can't you? The answer? No one knows. Because they designed it that way. Why can't you just, like, run around him? Who knows? Alright, what is this? It's a hatch. <clears throat> you know, maybe there aren't vac tubes. Maybe the hatches are like a universal thing where if you put something in the hatch, it can be accessed from any hatch. I, I really don't remember how it works. I can't remember. Oh no. This door here? Right here? <sighs> I'm pretty sure inside of this door is the first place you get to save. And it's also the first place that they start to come alive. I don't want to go. I'm going to I'm gonna go everywhere else first. I do not want to go in there. Alright, that was Boulevard St. Michelle, apparently. I thought it was St. Michael. So let's go down Broadway. Let's go to a Broadway show. Hey, dude, what's up? Ooh. Micro Quarter. Felici. 
Yes, in the time-honored tradition of survival horror, just like a ton of other games, this game has um, audio logs. Which I actually love. They're kind of overused, I guess, but I really do love them. There's something cool and just kind of creepy and fascinating about coming across like a dead, derelict, or monster-ridden environment where everyone's pretty much dead. But you have these little logs that are just tiny snippets of their lives. Orange tag. Ooh. Standard issue microquarter. Probably for personal use only. Oh, let's see what he has to say. Antonio Felici, base director, day log, August 8, 2018. 11.56 p.m. I was walking down Broadway when I first heard them coming. There's a dead man hovering in front of me. I just walk on by. I can still hear gunfire. Earth Control should never have shipped those weapons in. If anyone gets to hear this, tell Alan B. I resigned. I handed the master key over to Judith. The crew trust her more than me. They think I'm in Allenby's pocket. Well, I guess I used to be. Yuri broadcast a message a few moments before system closed down. He said, stay alone, stay alive. Sure, but stay alive how long? An hour at most? The end will come soon. Main bulkheads are sealed. Shuttle bay area obstructed. No way out. I'm heading back to my own room. Lock myself in. Sooner or later they'll come for me, and that'll be the finish. If anyone hears this, tell my wife I kept the faith. She'll know what that means. Some things are personal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the sound of someone who can't voice act. Those were his dying words, essentially. And yet he didn't even sound like he cared. A small electronic tag attaches to the wrist. Alright. Orange tag, so where is that going to open? Oh, that's going to open... Uh, the door where you first get to save, I think. Yeah. I'm guessing that before they started assaulting you with monsters trying to kill you, they wanted to establish the whole keycard tag thing. So they were, before they, you know, before the monsters came out, they wanted you to have to unlock one door. Which makes sense. It totally makes sense. I get it. Yellow tag required. Can you sprint in this game? I actually don't remember. Ugh. Yellow tag required. Once again, trying to keep my orientation straight. Yellow tag, yellow tag. Okay, yeah, I see where I am. Okay. Yeah, orange tag is definitely used to get into that room. All right, well, I don't want to go into that room, so I'm going to go this way first. Ooh, health boost. Uh, examine, please? Examine health boost. Okay. Apparently, he has nothing to say about it. Yeah, the environments are really well detailed. I'm still impressed. Oh, whoops. Looks like the lock mechanism has been heat fused. Hmm. Guess you need to blow it up or something, or use a blow uh, use a blowtorch on it to open it. Hi. I'm, I am going everywhere but that one door. Okay, before I start getting assaulted, I need to be clear on the controls, so hold on. 
Twitch, walk, yep, yep, yep. Enter is to interact. I've got that. Space is to kick. I believe space fires if you have a weapon out. Ooh, ooh, there is a run. Left control. Wait, what? According to the manual, run is left control plus. No, I'm not kidding. It says left control plus. Left control plus what? It doesn't say. It just says left control plus. The hell does that mean? Do I just hold down left control? Okay, so what they meant to say was left control plus one of the movement keys. You hold it down. Control to run, huh? Yeah, that's great. Such a weird key. All right, combat mode. Yeah, combat mode is space bar, which just kicks when you don't have a weapon. Um, enter fires my weapon. Okay, so when I have a weapon, I can press space to go into combat mode and then press enter to fire. Got it. Side leap. Ooh, you can do a side leap. Uh, left control plus left and right arrow keys, followed by removing the arrow key. Wow, look at this description for this control. It's like a fucking paragraph. To side leap, left control plus left and right arrow keys followed by removing the arrow key in correspondence to the direction you want to leap away from. What? Let me test this. Left control. The f <laughs> what? Oh, come on. I'm ready. I'm ready. Bring it on. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'm never gonna... I, I don't think I'm ever gonna use that. So you hold down left control, and then you hold down both left and right arrow keys to prep it. He's ready. He's getting ready to wrestle with someone. He's gonna, he's gonna run at him. And then you remove the arrow key. You remove the direction that you want to leap away from. So I want to leap away from the right, so I think I release the right arrow key? Yeah. Oh my god, there's a zombie that's about to get me! Hold on! <gasps> okay, rather than like spend two seconds trying to prep this stupid move, how about I just turn and run? Just a thought. I have a feeling I'm gonna run instead of doing this. It looks like I'm about to play football. And I think that's about it. Yeah, that's basically it. Alright, well those controls are shit. Total shit. I... wait, am I going... I'm going back. Whoops. Forwards! Ever forwards! Key to med bay, key I guess? Marked M E D. Med? Gee, I don't know. Alright, where is the med bay? I, I don't see anything that says med. Whatever, if I come across it. The bulkhead sealed. All right, not getting in there. What's corridor down here? Corridor after corridor, not a living soul. Shadows and echoes. This is a haunted house on Mars. Now that I think about it, this game is essentially a haunted house, isn't it? That's actually what a lot of survival horror tends to be, I think. You know, you're in some sort of a closed environment trying to survive. Be it a mansion or Vita Base 1 on Mars. Ooh, 
Ooh, there's a vac tube. Okay. The bulkhead sealed. If one sealed, they'll all be sealed. All right. How do I use this thing? A low-tech vacuum tube. <laughs> um, you can send it up and down. What? Up and down what? I mean, to where? Sunset Boulevard. Is that where I'm sending it to, or where I am? I think that's where I am. Huh. A low tech back. All right, what's in there? Note from Ben Gunn, number one. Park Lane is written in capitals. Could be a password. Hmm. I've... What the hell does that text say above it? It's so... Uh, like, blurry. It's, it looks like it says 8. Or is that an I? I'm in the... Mood? I'm in the mood, Park Lane? Park Lane? Where's Park Lane? Is it somewhere nearby? Park Lane. Uh, it's kind of far away. I'm on Sunset Boulevard right now. I believe Park Lane is cut off by a bulkhead, so yeah, I don't think I can get there yet. Green tag required. Oh, shit. You know the only place left. That one door. Alright, let's set this whole thing off. I can't wait until all these guys start waking up. Yeah, I really, as far as pacing goes, I really like the fact that the beginning of the game doesn't have anything crazy. Like, it's not crazy action. They establish this kind of tense anticipation because you see all of these zombie monster things and you know they're going to attack you at some point. And you keep waiting for it to happen every time you get near them, but they don't wake up. So the fact that you have this period of, like, normalcy that takes a while to build up is really good for tension. Is this the way back? I think it is. Yeah. Um, which way to orange? I think it's down here. Yep. Hmm. <sighs> here we go. Okay, so tags open doors. Yep, that was essentially the tutorial. The game was telling me, I'm not going to attack you until we've established that you know how to open doors. Because as soon as zombies and stuff start to attack you, you're going to be too flustered to try to figure it out. I see through your game design game. Oh god. Oh god. I don't want to go in. Alright, fuck, just go in. Ah, oh, god. <sighs> Uh, see her right there? On that bed? Let's just say she's just taking a nap. And I'm going to disturb her sleep. I believe it's triggered right after you make your first save on the computer. I think so. Nice desk. Shame about the lock. Damn it. Hmm. Don't think I have anything that could lockpick. Nah. Did that work? I guess not. Nice desk. Nope. Shame of Hi. Oh damn. That is a lot of ammo. The base director's girlfriend, perhaps? How the hell would I know, Kenzo? 
Oh, that's right. He's talking to himself, not to me. Ooh. Another tube. Alright, so yeah, base director's quarters, so that the name up there does tell you where you are. So hold on. What if I move it right now? Okay, I don't need this photo, so let's do this. Let's see how this works. Yeah, like where is it sending it? Maybe to any other vac tube? I don't know. And of course, the only one with a gun, Matlock, is still stuck inside of her airlock, so she can't use any vac tubes to give the gun to me. Here we go. I'm scared. Voice password required. Oh, uh this Antonio Felici. Computer accessed. Recording by Judith Haraway, emergency transmission. hell did you extract a password from that? What? Okay, well, I guess... Let me get a piece of paper to write down passwords and stuff. This'll do. Oh, whoops. Martian Gothic? Notes. Okay. Alright, so door controls. I guess maybe this is how I'm going to allow Karn or Kern and Matlock to get out. Once again, I'm forgetting at least one of their names, as always. So we've got local, unrestricted, restricted, uh, Martian, Martian Mayhem, the worst video game in the solar system. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason, the way you save the game is by going into Martian Mayhem on a computer and using a save slot inside of the game within the game. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. It's really kooky 